All right, folks, Daryl Anger here, uh, your uh, fiddler at large, although I usually take a kind of a medium or small size, but uh, let's not quibble about those things. Let's go right to the meat of this uh, little sharing session here. I am holding a brand new violin uh, made by Glasser, uh, Glasser Industries. You can see the, the label right there. You'll probably read that. And uh, you'll also notice that if I take the, yeah, it is an electric violin. It's got a cable coming out of it. That is removable. Um, but you can see that this is not only green, but it's made entirely out of fiber graphite. Graphite, and it's very beautiful, actually. Apparently, you can get these in red, very dark red, and other colors as well, but green is pretty cool. Now, this is the same material that they make fighter jets out of, and they're starting to make guitars, and they've been making cellos, and you may even have a graphite bow already, but these are relatively recent, you know, making violins that actually sound like something out of graphite. And these are the nicest ones I've seen. They actually have corners. A lot of them don't have the corners. And it, you know, it's pretty clean workmanship. It's, it's very nice. You can see the F holes look good. And it looks like a kind of a Garnieri-ish pattern. Um, but uh, yeah, and it's a five string. It's got five strings. Pretty cool. That's what I like. Anyway, so we've got this really kind of indestructible, you know, very nice finish. Uh, there's no purfling because you don't need purfling. Purfling uh, on wood is designed to keep the wood from splitting. And of course, this is not going anywhere. You could probably paddle your canoe and then play it later on the river uh, that night with it. Not that I'm recommending that. And then the, the finish on the neck, uh, this looks like the whole neck is one piece molded, probably. Um, it, yeah, it's one piece, um, fingerboard, neck, everything. And it's this finished very nice, kind of very pleasing to the touch, kind of matte finish. It feels good on your fingers, on your hand. Um, just enough texture to make it feel like dry and nice. And then we've got, that's all same piece. We see the scroll there. Um, not a bad scroll. Um, it's molded. Uh, you know, it's missing a few details, but it's, you can paint, paint them in. I, it's not that bad. And it kind of has a nice look with the pegs. It all looks kind of one, one piece. I'm leaving the tag on because I'm, I don't know. I'll probably buy it, but I haven't decided yet. I'm still thinking about it. But it's a beautiful instrument, really, you know, for what it is, electric violin. And, uh, but, w you know, what really stands out for me is they have really gone all out with this instrument in the sense of um, geared pegs. These are nilling geared tuning pegs. And, you know, um, if you have an instrument that gets played, that you use to play music with, and it's not some kind of museum piece, I just don't know why you wouldn't get these immediately, if not sooner, because this just solves every problem. Yeah, you just you tune them, it stays tuned, what more would you want? You know, that's, I, I just, um, so that's really great. I would, every instrument that I own now has these um, mechanical tuners. So it's nice to see these as standard equipment and this electric violin. And over on this end, of course, we have, this, this looks like some, quite a bit of stuff going on, but it's all outside the instrument, right? We've got the pickup, bridge pickup. It looks like, uh, oh, it's something, you know, it's, it's, pickup is in the bridge uh, and all the the electronics are built into this chin rest kind of far out it's pretty nice uh, so you could take this off 
theoretically and play it acoustically. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of stuff going on. We've got a volume knob here and a couple of tone. It looks like treble and bass. We're going to check that out in a minute when we plug it in. Well, there it's plugged in, but we haven't turned it on. Anyway, so yeah, that's pretty nice. It's like this little assembly. Uh, with, it's an active electronics, a little battery stuff going. That's pretty cool. So we'll see about that. And then um, acoustically, yeah, it's as I said, it's like an electric violin that has acoustic capabilities, unlike the AES, for instance, uh, violins which are incredible, acoustic violins which have electric capabilities as well. But this is kind of indestructible. Yeah, it doesn't sound that bad. Very nice, kind of a bluegrassy sound. Uh, you know, plenty of bass, which is kind of cool. And, uh, you know, kind of, kind of mid rangey kind of, uh, kind of sharp, you know, like kind of, you know, like big panther y kind of bluegrass sound to it. Um, yeah. Not bad. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's acceptable. You could get through a gig with this acoustically and then uh, turn around and, uh, you know, when the, band, the other band comes in and sets up the drums, you're good. So, let's see that. Let's see what this thing will do, you know, what, what it sounds like uh, electrically. I've, I've got it hooked up to just a little uh, little amplifier, a uh, little acoustic type amplifier. Uh, nothing special, but uh, let's see. Let's see if, how it works with a nothing, nothing special amp. Well, with both these little tone knobs set to center, there's a center detent, which means kind of the zero um, setting. Uh, <laughs> sounds great, sounds super solid. You know, not too thin. Uh, it's got a lot of punch. You can really punch it out. Brighter, I guess you probably just turn this treble knob. It's all right, you know. It's not a huge amount of tone difference, uh, which is fine. Let's see what the bass does. I'm going to turn it all the way up. Yeah, it's not not a huge amount of difference, which is enough to let you know. Wow, that's a lot of difference. If I turn the bass all the way down. Uh, very little bass. <laughs> well, it makes even this little cheapo amp sound amazing, and no, uh, no box, you know, no, uh, uh, you know, floor box or anything like that. I'm not using the bags or anything like that. I'm just plugging straight in, and um, what it just—it's a couple of little AAA batteries, so you can find those in the local Safeway or anything. So you're pretty cool there. Not too, not too hard. Um, wow, yeah, sounds kind of great, actually. God, I might have to buy this thing. Dang, well, it's. You know, and then uh, you add your reverb and your, um, you know, uh, chorusing and your uh, sitar emulator, and hey, this Bob's your uncle, right? So, I am giving this thing uh, an A. You know, just a, you know, it's for what it is. You know, if you if you want an electric violin, it's a little heavy, right? Uh, that's one of the things that electric violins. Uh, you know, they uh, most of them are kind of heavy, and uh, what you don't want is a violin that's going to uh, be heavy out here. And this is not, you know, it's it's substantial, 
Uh, but most of the weight is right in this area where the with this, this uh, complicated little uh, chin rest, right? You know, that's doing all the work. It's got all the electronics in it. So that's great because when if the weight is here, then you know it's not levering out here. It's just uh, you get it on your chin, feels pretty good. And the weight kind of you know somewhat disappears, although. Uh, not entirely, but if you're going to have some weight, and most of these electric violins do, this is the place to have it. Now, I'm hoping that this, uh, you know, we could play this at a really high volume and not have it uh, go crazy in the resonance department, because um, that would be uh, that would be ideal, right? Uh, it's one of the problems with the AES is that uh, you know it's great at you know, like medium low volumes; it sounds incredible. But uh, once you get, you really start turning up, if there's a drummer that's playing loud in the room, then uh, it's just going to start feeding back. And this may not do that so much. I'm pretty sure because the, the pickup is in the bridge that it's not going to do, do that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think uh, this is a good, good instrument that will, you know, you can like use it in a pinch for acoustic stuff. And uh, it's very solid, obviously. I just whacked it really good there. I mean, it's completely invulnerable. It's just like I never did anything. And uh, yeah, I think uh, this glasser, it's a glasser uh, NY. I think that might be the, the title there. Show that again. Um, Get a good look at that, and uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I would say if you're in the market for an electric violin that's got a little bit of acoustic stuff, you can use it uh, on a river trip or underwater or uh, you know climbing Mount Everest or whatever you're doing this summer. Uh, you could do a lot worse <laughs> than uh, getting a, this this rather you know rather beautiful. It's kind of fascinating, actually. It's the, the magic of materials. You know, uh, you get flame maple or this amazing checkerboard graphite. Uh, yeah. All right, well, that's my report. I hope this is going to be useful for you. Check it out. Uh, I say check it out. That's what I say. Daryl Langer signing off. Goodbye. <laughs>